If all of a sudden your kid won't let you leave the room at bedtime or starts waking up in the middle of the night, there's a good chance you've recently dealt with one of these two sleep killers, travel or illness. Let me show you four ways to make sure that these things don't kill your kid's sleep. And don't miss the last tip, this is where parents always mess up. Kids who have great sleep habits where they can fall asleep easily and sleep for 10 to 12 hours through the night have one thing in common, consistency. The more consistent your child's sleep schedule is, the, the tougher it is to throw them off of that schedule because sleep habits are just that, habits. Here's an analogy for you. Let's say you took your kids on a camping trip for the weekend and you didn't have any coffee. Well, you probably survived the weekend, maybe, but when you got back home, the next morning, you'd be brewing a cup of coffee again because that's just part of your daily routine. So you're always gonna come back to it. Even if you get out of the habit for a few days, once you get back home, you just fall right back into that habit of making coffee again. And it's the exact same thing with sleep habits. The key to having great sleep habits is having a good, consistent sleep routine. And that starts with bedtime. The first thing I want you to do is maintain a consistent bedtime routine. So keep your kid's bedtime as consistent as possible, even when they're sick or if you're traveling. So doing some of those same familiar things like reading a book or singing lullabies, having the white noise machine in the room with them, these things can really be comforting and provide that structure and let your kid know that sleep is coming next. This is one big reason why it's so important to have a consistent bedtime routine on a daily basis. So meaning when your child is home and healthy, you wanna have well-established steps in that bedtime routine because it helps your child get ready and know that sleep is coming next. It can even help to stimulate melatonin production. And then when you have those consistent steps, you just stick with them when your kid is sick or you take them with you when you're traveling and it makes sleep so much easier. Number two, be flexible with the sleep schedule. So that's right, I want you to be consistent with the routine, but I want you to be flexible with the schedule. When you're traveling, the sleep schedule may be a little bit off and that's okay, that's just life. You may be busy and you may not be able to get your kid to bed at their normal early bedtime, but just do what you can to prioritize sleep. For example, if your child's gonna be going to bed late one night, could you encourage a nap that day? Or if you're gonna be driving somewhere, could you drive during nap time to make sure they get a chance to sleep? Or is it possible to not have two late nights in a row to give them a chance to catch up on some sleep? So just doing a little planning ahead can help to make sure that your child's sleep schedule doesn't get too thrown off. And if your child is sick, they may actually need to be getting more sleep because that's as humans what our body needs to do in order to fight illness and get healthy, we need our rest. But lots of times kids' symptoms make it difficult for them to sleep. So when they're sick, it may feel like they're actually getting less sleep and they may be getting really overtired. And that's not what we want. If your child is losing a lot of sleep overnight because they're coughing or congested or even vomiting, then just keep an eye on their sleepy symptoms in the evening. They may need to go to bed super early and that's okay. Or they may even look so tired during the day, so worn out that they may need to take a nap even if they haven't been napping in a long time. And if you see that they are like really struggling and really tired and they like this, you can even put them in the car and drive them around and get them a little car nap. I mean, it's not what I typically recommend, but when kids are sick, sleep really does become the priority. So you need to get them sleep wherever you can. All right, so the third tip is where a lot of parents end up getting it wrong and they overcompensate and that leads to a lot of trouble down the road. So number three is give a little extra comfort and reassurance, but not too much. Now, sleep can be hard when your kid is sick or maybe they're sleeping in a strange place for the first time, and it's okay to stay and give them a little extra comfort and some TLC, but just think about doing as little as you can to help them get to sleep because you don't wanna start any sleep habits that are gonna be hard to break down the road. For example, if they're having trouble falling asleep in a new place when you're traveling, it's okay to sit there for a minute next to them and rub their back and reassure them and just let, you, let them know that you're just in the next room, but try to leave as they are calm and drifting off to sleep. And if your child wakes up coughing, I mean, feel free to go in there and you know give them a hug, prop them up under some pillows, rub their back for a second, maybe give them some Vicks Vapor Rub, 
but then once they are calmed down and resettled again, try to leave the room. But what happens to many families in situations like this is they end up doing more than they need to. They end up doing too much to help their child get back to sleep. And that just can start some bad sleep habits that you, you don't want to stick with you. So what I mean is like a parent might decide to sleep in bed with the child so that they can just, you know, rub their back all night long and, and help or pat their back if they're coughing. Or maybe parents let the kid hop in bed with them to avoid waking up and having to go back into their room multiple times during the night. But giving them all that sleep help can quickly become their new expectation. So that's why I say do as little as possible to get them back to sleep and then slip out of their room. And it's also okay to tell them, I'm only sitting here and rubbing your back because you don't feel well or because we're at grandma's house and I'm helping you get used to it. But once we get home, we all sleep in our own beds. When you're traveling, the sleep schedule may be a little bit off and that's okay, that's just life. You may be busy and you may not be able to get your kid to bed at their normal early bedtime, but just do what you can to prioritize sleep. All right, number four, this is where a lot of families mess up. Number four is get right back to normal when you get home. The thing about vacations and illnesses is that they end. Most trips, most colds only last a few days. You will eventually be home again. Your child will eventually be feeling better. And that's when you need to make sure to get sleep right back on track again. This is where many families hit a speed bump and they keep the sleep help going once they get back home, once things get back to normal. So if you've been on a trip, then that means night number one in your house, you're back to solo sleeping. And let's say your child has been sick, then you just, you really need to be honest with yourself when your child is feeling better and decide to stop giving that additional sleep assistance. And if the sleep routine changed and you ended up dabbling in some sleep habits that you don't wanna bring home with you, it's okay to talk about it. You know, you can say to your kid, I know you slept with mommy and daddy, but we only do that when we're at grandma and grandpa's house. But now that we're home, everybody sleeps in their own bed. Just talk to your child about it. And don't be afraid to offer some rewards in the morning for your child getting back to their good sleep habits if you think that's going to help kind of jumpstart them back into their regular routine. If you're looking for more tips on how to get your kiddo to be an independent sleeper, check out this video.